And um, hold on. Okay, so, all right, so this is the September 2nd, 2021 meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee. And um, I'm gonna read the quick statement. about how we're meeting remotely. Okay, my computer is slow, but hopefully it's gonna work. Does Darcy still come to the meetings? Um, she hasn't been um, since she's been on leave from the TSO. Hmm. I did reach out to her today to see if she was going to attend. All right, so uh, so here's the statement I read. Uh, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so in the following manner, like through Zoom. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and public participation um in any public hearing conducted during the meeting is by remote means only okay tracy there are three participants it's eve holden and someone else do you okay. want to promote yeah them? let's you... uh, yeah that's that's fine all right and it's only two people i think just even holden oh all right yeah one person left okay, okay. i will i'll promote them thank you Is Holden a member of the TAC or is he a potential member of the TAC? He's a potential member. He's applied to the TAC. I don't know. A bunch of us have reached out to people to try to encourage them to apply to the TAC. I don't know how many applications have been received. If somebody from Town Hall knows that, that would be awesome to find out. But Holden has started attending our meetings for the last few meetings. Mm -hmm. That's good. Hi, Eve. So, um, hey, hold on. Hi, everyone. Hi, hey, everyone. Okay, so, hey. hi. All right, so, um, okay, so I did want to just send around. Um, we had taken a number, just as a housekeeping thing, we had taken a number of votes at the last meeting regarding um, the project at Kendrick Park. So, um, I just just because we haven't met in I think three weeks, I'll just, I meant to email that before the meeting. I can email it now and we can also go through it or we can just go through it on my screen and then um, I can email it after the meeting, whatever yeah. makes sense yeah. to people. The, the votes are in the August do, yeah. 12th minutes. Oh, the votes are in the August 12th minutes, great. Yeah, they are, they're in the minutes. Excellent. Okay, so, I haven't reviewed the minutes from August 12th yet, but we can pull those up. Hi, have a good night. You too, bye-bye. Okay. Oh, Amber just sent them to us, sorry. Tracy, I have these printed. Do you want me to read them? Um, yeah, I think it is helpful to if we can um, see them on the screen. Okay. Bruce, but um, thank you for offering that. That is really helpful. Yeah. You go ahead then. Yeah, I just, um, I know you. it's very, it's always very nice when you offer to do that. So we have the minutes from uh, July 22nd and the minutes from April, I mean, sorry, August 12th. So I can just pull up the meeting, the minutes from July 22nd that were sent out by Amber. And um, did anybody, when they read these over, did anybody have any changes to these? Do you, do you want to wait to approve these until Kim joins us? Um. We can. I mean, I think if it's just like housekeeping with the minutes, I don't think that that's well, I'll, too I'll, necessary. I'll, I'll propose then that we go ahead and approve these minutes unless other people have any changes. 
Yeah, now let I'll me, um, I'll, I'll just pull them up. Um, so they're just one minute, min one page minutes. And um, just so people can take a quick look at them before we approve them. And I will. I read them before the meeting, so I'm all set. I mean, did anybody else want to look at them before we vote? No, I, I read them quickly before the meeting. I haven't got nothing. Uh, okay. I'm actually uh, in the car, so. Oh, okay. Thanks for I calling will be in from the car. In a we well, it's, uh, uh, I was, I'm not at home because East Leverett Road still closed. So yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess I just had one. I mean, there is like one small typo with the minutes that my word pointed out. Hold on. Let me just, um, I'll just pull them up just to share the screen on them. So I'm just sharing the screen with the minutes. Um, so here, I don't know, it's not letting me highlight anything. But anyway, so here with my mouse, right, it says that there's like a small typo. And um, so it does say that uh, the TSO had originally asked for our input by August 26, but then they changed that. And so they wanted our input by, uh, I believe it is September 21st, which is something that we're on track to do. Um, and so I think the, min the minutes are great um, the way they are. I, I mean, it would be helpful sometime. I don't know if Amber is still here or maybe she left after she launched the meeting. Is Amber still here? Guilford? <laughs> um, it just sometimes, you know, if we're trying to recap our just, it is, I think it can be helpful to have a little bit more discussion about um, a little bit more summary in the minutes about what we talked about. Um, so just like as a feature comment, I mean, how do other members feel about that? Well, as a person who used to take minutes and uh, Chris will remember this for the uh, zoning subcommittee it is a lot of work to try to summarize what people have said. Oh, I, I mean, I agree. I'm somebody who's taken minutes too, and yeah. and I don't like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I'm for sure. Um, but I guess at the same time, right, that the minutes are like the official record of what happened at the meeting. And so it can be a little challenging like, to people if they haven't participated in the meeting to like to understand what happened after the meeting. Um, if they just see the minutes. Now we are fortunate in that meetings are currently um, being recorded on Zoom, you know, as long as that's still a policy. Uh, but at the same time, I believe that, um, you know, under the law that the minutes are still the official record. They, they, they are. Um, so, the, the Zoom meeting is the Zoom meeting, but minutes are the official right, record. Right, exactly. And the open meeting law suggests that you add some detail to it around votes. Okay. So that there's some context. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I mean, a simple vote to approve the minutes or something like that is not. Mm -hmm. um, but if the committee goes on for a while, if the committee goes on for 45 minutes in a discussion, right. there should be some substance there. Okay. And, and there should be some substance around each of the votes. That makes sense. Thank you. And I mean, I agree that minutes can be painful. And I'm really grateful that we have Amber to take the minutes because when I was on the transportation, whatever, the public transportation and bicycle committee, I was in charge of minutes. And I did not like it. <laughs> and it gets really, it can be hard. Um, all right, so I'm just also going to pull up the, the minutes from the last meeting. So I'm sorry. So I guess, do we have to take a roll call vote on those then? No, just a voice voter, you know, it, yeah, we've fine. all checked in. So yeah, we've, we've all checked in. That's fine. Okay. Um, all right. So. And then um, I'll just pull up the next ones. Did, did, we, we, did we vote? Oh, no. okay. All right. Yeah. Let's vote. All right, so all in favor of approving our minutes? Aye. 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 Okay, so we have four people. Marcus, did you vote too? Yes, I did. I voted. Excellent. No okay, all right. So four to zero approved. And then we can also, oh, hi, Kim. How are you? 
Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. No, no. Thank you. It's fine. And Marcus is in the car. So okay. all of the members that we currently have are here, Great. which is five of us. Um, and we were just going over the minutes and we right. just had a brief discussion about maybe adding some detail, particularly like around votes. Yes. Good. Okay. Um, and we're, I was just going to pull up. I don't know if you had a chance to look at them yet. The minutes from the last meeting, the, the meeting on the 12th. Mm hmm and if we want to vote on those or if we want to wait and oh but i guess we could just recap them just because they were um they they do include our votes for the um right do you want me to go over that yeah sure um i had actually put together a word document too that like summarizes our votes but um oh, great but, let's, but why don't we we can pull it up from the minutes too okay um yeah and i have that i likely i can um I have that right here. Yeah. So can I screen yeah. share? And yeah, go I'll... ahead. Sure. Oh no, you know what? I have the I have the agenda up. I oh, okay, sure. I have the I have the minutes. Okay. All right. So these are the minutes. Oh, let me share them. Yeah. All right. Okay, so, um, right, so this is TSO, uh, just to recap. Um, yes. So I think we mainly want to focus on the Kendrick Park part. part of yeah, it. I think, yeah, we do. And I would like to, um, and I can pull up my document that just summarizes our votes the way I was planning to put them in the memo. So for our minutes, did anybody have any changes to the minutes? No. I think I would just clarify here under 1A that the project doesn't run into the UMass campus. It runs like from, I would indicate where it runs. It runs from Eastman Lane to Pine Street, personally. And um, just to clarify, because into the UMass campus, I guess I usually think about that as coming from, from town into the UMass campus. Um, and now Guilford, is, are you still planning to present the project to the TSO on the 30th? That's still yes. Okay. Um, and that we, we did talk about doing a site visit on the 23rd. We can talk about that later during the meeting. Um, yes, I had spoken to the Safe Routes coordinator just as a follow up to her presentation with the, um, with the committee earlier. And, um, and I did see, actually, I did see an update. I meant to send it around uh, about the transit link with Worcester with the PVT, but I think there's some issues with staffing that I know UMass Transit is short of drivers and I think PVT has some driver issues too. Okay. And, um, and then we took the following votes, which is true. So I can, um, the, I mean, the minutes look fine to me. I would just make a couple minor tweaks. Do people wanna go ahead and we can approve the minutes? Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, yeah. So if <clears throat> uh, let's do um, a vocal of uh, all the. All right. So okay. any right. any um, any um, not <laughs> approval? Any abstentions? No. I think we're all here. Okay. Great. Yep. We're all here. Unanimous. Okay. Great. Okay, and all right, so um, all right, so then we're back to, I'll stop my screen share. We're back to our continuing item. And um, so let me just, I'll just pull up my Word doc that had, um, was summarizing the recommendations. And then, so what I wanted to do just because we hadn't met in three weeks is I'll just revisit what we voted on. I did visit the site, you know, and think about some of our recommendations a little, well, I think it might be helpful to have like some clarifying discussion about a few of them. And then also to cover the parts that we didn't cover earlier. So I will pull that up um, for sharing. Now, as I was just saying, um, 
as I was saying, can everybody see that? It's okay. It's a little small. Could you just do it one? Yeah. Page, yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. Let's see. One page. Okay. Yeah. I'm always making my screen bigger and bigger. Bigger. Is that better? Maybe a little more. I think. No, I'm always getting. In the getting bottom right hand corner, there's a. No, a yeah, I see that. I see the slider. All right. Um, so the first vote, I mean, this is how I had recorded them. Please let me know if we need to make corrections. I said the TAC recommends changing North Pleasant Street from McClellan Street to Triangle Street from a two way street to a one way street going northbound if traffic calming measures are added to slow traffic. So, do we have any changes to that? Seems good. And so, um, as we talked about at the meeting, and I am working on some narrative to go along with these bullet points. Um, as we talked about the meeting, right? So the council had already approved having a um, raised improved crosswalk at McClellan and North Pleasant Street. And then also at the meeting, we had talked about adding an additional crosswalk north of that. Um, so, and I would so like to see. I would like to see both of those implemented, if possible. Mm -hmm. And so I, that was going to be in my comments. And then, so then the second one, the town recommends the town place angled parking along the east side of North Pleasant Street from Halleck to Triangle is appropriate, and removes the parallel parking on the west side of the section of North Pleasant Street. Right. So we talked about that because. Um, with the driveways there, and I measured it, I think there's nine driveways along that section of street from McClellan to Triangle. There's also some shared driveways. Um, and there's there's driveways that aren't shared, but then at the point where they're between the sidewalk and the street, they're shared. Um, it just seems like there's a lot of potential conflicts. And I thought it was really promising that by moving it all, moving all the parking to the park side of the street that we actually, it doesn't decrease the number of spaces, but it also seems like it could be much safer. Yeah. Right. And then I also, you, I mean, go ahead. Just so we all know, I mean, our, I'm biking to work this morning, you know, that entire side where there's permit parking, parallel permit parking right now, um, it was full today. I'm sure. Well, and what it, time, it, what time it, were you going to work? you know, at 8.45. Okay, okay. And, and it's also, the, the visibility is really poor coming, you know. Oh, absolutely. I absolutely. Walkers or people coming out of those driveways if that parking is there as well. When well, also you it's talked about delivery vehicles and like other types of things too. Yeah, so that's the kind of thing I think we might. Include. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, I've been working on the narrative. I'm sorry, it was just a little too rough to share at this meeting. Um, then... So then the next thing we, right. So I, I guess one question I had about the angled parking um, and maybe it would be helpful if Guilford could pull up the map, but as you're approaching triangle, like there, it is pretty steep. Like the park, the park side is a bit steep. And so, I mean, it doesn't, I'm, I measured it a few different places and it doesn't really seem like it's more narrow, but it sort of feels more narrow and maybe too, because of the construction and just the trees and the hill and stuff. But I guess how far close to North Pleasant, I mean, to Triangle Street, do we think that the parking would be? Oh, sorry, I can stop sharing my screen. If, Guilford, if you wanted to pull that up. Can't hear you, Guilford. Or do you want us to pull that up, Guilford? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. So this is the um, this is kind of the concept, but it's got the parallel parking. We haven't switched over to angle parking right. yet. Right. Uh huh. Okay. And we're thinking somewhere in this area, we we stop the parking. Okay. So it's closer towards. You know, it's not all the way up to Triangle Street. It'll be back some. Well, yeah, so I mean, you can kind of see there from your picture, right, that there's the vegetation to the right of your hand, and it that does seem like a pretty kind of steep area there. Um, it is, but so. the sidewalk, remember, is going to be in the road. Okay. 
All right. So did you say that you're going to have angled parking there, Guilford? That's what the recommendation from the TAC is, that the all angled parking on the park side. Right. Does that mean that the par uh, parking moves farther into the park? No, we do away yeah. with the... We do away with this tree belt and this parking on the west side. And there's enough room then to fit angled parking in there? Yes, with <laughs> one-way traffic. That's what we were talking about, yeah. And, and, you know, we have to do something about inclusion of bike lanes or whatever. Right, right, okay. All right. Okay, so, so Gilford, if you stop sharing, I guess I can go back to the bullets. Yep. All right, thanks, okay. Okay. Um, so one, um, so back to our angle parking discussion is we didn't decide when we were discussing about it on August 12th, whether we wanted to recommend uh, back in parking or front end parking. Um, I don't know if we do want to take a vote on that. I think that we discussed like the pros and cons of both of them. I mean, we could we could say something about, you know, depending on what the town decides with some of the other back end parking that it's trying, right? So I think Marcus, you raised a good point that if you have back end parking, that if you have like a minivan or something with your kids, right? And then you're opening the doors that then the kids, the door side is like the park side, <laughs> like when they exit the vehicle. Yeah, I and think but that seems like a good safety feature. Um, I mean, I, I did mean to check on at Look Park because they have their circular, their driveway that goes through the park and they have front end angle parking to see like if they had had issues with it or so on. Um, I mean, hopefully the traffic in this area won't be so high that it would make a big difference with the back, like that people would be really challenged with back end and with it um, pausing and interfering with traffic, like interfering with cars, which is my concern about some of the other um, back in parking, such as the proposed, the approved parking for Main Street. But I mean, do we want to recommend one or the other, or do we want to sort of defer to the town? What do people think? I thought we last time we decided to defer to the town. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, perhaps suggesting that it's back in. That's really. Yeah, I think that's what that's what we came out with was the suggestion, but we didn't. You know, well, and I, right. And I think we could just, you know, we could mention like some pros and cons of both. Yeah. yeah. You know, as we present it. Because, you know, as someone who cycles through there with regularity, um, you know, if you're front end parking, if, if you're back end parking, then you you're already in the street and you're surveying all the space around you. Yeah. But with front end parking, when you're coming out, you, you're really kind of doing it kind of blind on that street and if there are also cyclists coming by you know that could be really dangerous. right it's actually interesting so in Northampton when Northampton tried right. back in parking and they were originally going to do it I think for like 60 or 90 days and they suspended it earlier um, but one of the issues was that a cyclist had almost been hit with the back in parking oh really so yeah and I mean there were some other complaints too it's very different there yeah so but I mean, what we're, we keep talking about, you know, if this street has traffic calming and it's a one-way street and stuff, it becomes like more and more of a neighbor neighborhood street and less of a cut through and things like that. So um, it might be, it might work fine. And then, um, so our next uh, vote was about just deferring to the DAC regarding like where the handicap parking is placed. I did attend the last DAC meeting and they discussed the project. Um, actually, it was a little bit unfortunate because I raised my hand towards the beginning of the meeting um, and nobody really noticed me. And then they were discussing, they were discussing the original memo, including the parallel parking and not having much angled parking. And I, so I did, there was a public comment period at the end and I did, they, somebody finally did see me and I commented, but they said, you should have told us sooner. What, like what did, what the TAC had done? And I said, I tried, I raised my hand. I, so such is the challenges of Zoom, I guess, yeah. and being noticed. <laughs> um, but it seemed like they, you know, they talked about, you know, what the requirements are in terms of, you know, providing um, accessible parking, like in parking lots and so on. And 
I think they were saying that the standard is um, one accessible space per 50 spaces, um, which I don't believe it applies on street though. Some have said that it should apply on street. And so they are gonna revisit this a little bit, I think at the next meeting and uh, Maureen who supports the, from the planning department who supports the DAC is like writing up their recommendations. And they didn't seem to have a strong preference for um, back end or front end parking. Um, they talked about both how you have, you know, people who have handicap placards who just need to be close to their destination. And then you also have people who have accessible vehicles, like who do need more space, including a lane for the ramps or the lifts or whatever. And typically those are on the passenger side, not the driver side. So I was really, we, excited. I was really excited. Guilford, you should know this to see that there was um, a woman who was in a wheelchair who was using their little kind of picnic benches like metal benches in that park right now and she was at the end of the sidewalk you know that the the sidewalk that goes through she was at the um near the mcclellan intersection and it had a space where she could pull her wheelchair right under on the on the table and it was so cool. I was like, oh my gosh, she was eight. You know, there was a, there was a student in a, in a wheelchair studying in the middle of the park. And I was so proud of that actually. So there you go. You know, I no, think- You should, you should was, thank planning. They came up with that table. Yeah, well, there's, anyway. There's, there's some other tables like that, hey. right? There's some at the um, downtown at like the common. Yay, Chris, yay, Chris. Yeah, it's great. But I did, I did talk to Dave Zomek and I asked him if he could have a few more garbage cans in Kendrick Park because there are almost none. And I, I, you know, I ate there recently at the nice picnic tables and there's no garbage cans anywhere. <laughs> so. I saw a bunch of bikes parked there the other day too. Well, there you go. Yeah. And the playground surface is pretty nice. It's like pretty spongy and yeah. Great. Okay. So so then the last main vote we took was about the green space on the west side of removing it on the west side of North Pleasant Street um, in order both to incur to support the angled parking, but also if we were going to do potential fu future bike lanes or paths or anything. Um, and we all supported that. So when I walked on that after, when I walked along the street after the vote, I mean, I do support the general recommendation about creating the space we need in order to have the on-street parking as well as bike facilities. Um, but at the same time, it is a pretty big green space. Like it was larger than I realized. It's about like five or six feet wide. And we did talk about how the tree warden had mentioned you can never really grow trees there or anything, right? That there's a gas line. Um, so it isn't, you know, super, uh, super, high quality green space and people have talked about how there's trash and stuff but it is green space a little bit so i one thing i did wonder is if if all of that space is removed how is the snow removal handled like because currently i'm sure that that area fills with snow from for the plows and stuff so guilford where would the snow go we would put it in the parking lot and then pick it out of the parking lot at a later date so we go all push it all into the spaces and then pile it up there and then pick it out. But like what parking lot? The parking spaces on the next to the park. Oh, I see. Okay. So even the one like across the street, it would all go over to the Kendrick Park side. Yeah, we would just probably push it all into that one side and leave it there and then come get it, make a big pile. And that wouldn't be a windrow, it'd be a pile. Put it at one end. But yeah. those would be, but those would be, so they would be in like the angled parking spaces though, right? Or Right, but not all those. Yeah, would be a couple, but that'd be fine. Right. Yeah. And I mean, so, and yeah. would the sidewalk like still be, the sidewalk on the park side, then it would still be cleared and everything, right? There'd still be space. Okay. I mean, it did seem that green space is sort of handy to have, like for you, when you plow on that side of the street. <laughs> but, um, um, okay. I mean, so I mean, when I walked along and I noticed when I walk along from that section of North Pleasant and then North Pleasant Street through um, towards UMass, like through the UMass campus, like they do have this wide space too, like the five to six feet green space. 
So I don't know whether it would work at all to have like a very small green space just to like break up all the pavement or whether that doesn't really have any utility. Like a few we, feet we break compared up the to pavement. five feet. We break up the pavement immediately on the other side, right? With everybody's no, it's true. front yard. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there is there is no need. Oh, of the sidewalk, trip. you're saying. Yeah. Right, okay. yeah. yeah so you go yeah. road, sidewalk, yard. Road, it's, we're not like, have, we don't have a 20 foot sidewalk. So I think, right. I don't think we okay. need like a, and it's right. something in between. Okay. All right. That sounds good. And then um, let me see. I'll go to the next page. And then if I can't. Oops, sorry. It's not what I need. Oh, it is. Okay. So then the, the thing we didn't vote on was just about the, um, the parking permit issue. So that was something that the TSO had asked us about. And I didn't recall voting on this. I think we decided because the town finance director and other people are looking at it, um, that we were just going to, we weren't going to vote on it per se, because that process is overlapping with our, this process. Um, and so that was my recollection that we didn't vote, but we did have some comments that we wanted to share. So does that sound right to people? Yeah, Is that people's good. recollection? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and so, I mean, when I went back and looked at it, so the permit parking program, including the maps of where the permit parking is located, I mean, it doesn't look like any of it has been changed since 2005. I think the only thing that might have changed is perhaps the fee that's assigned because I know that it used to be like $10 a year and it went up to 25 at some point. I don't recall when that was. Guilford, do you know when that was? No, don't. Or Chris, just Chris now? No. Um, okay. How much and is UMAP's um, parking permit? Hundreds, hundreds of dollars. Yeah, this is and even And this is the thing too. So even the spaces like in the Boltwood, the Boltwood garage at the lower level, those are $1,000 a year spaces. So 25 is not much. And parking at UMass is completely sold out for students. Oh, is that really? I can start making some money. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my neighborhood, lots of students are already parking on the grass. So there you go. Just like offer your whole yard. Or, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. charge so, by the inch. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I will send out, you know, as I write this up before we send it to TSO, I mean, these were the sort of the main points that we had talked about. Um, so I'd put them down just um, that, you know, they're glad that they're revisiting it. And we did wonder how much on-street parking is necessary on this section of street, since most of the residents have the parking behind the street, which is something Kim has mentioned. And it's, you know, it's completely true. And there's just a few residents, I think, there's in Triangle one that have less. At the have, very end of the street. There's like one resident. OK, there is just one residence. We could even say one residence. At the very end of the street. Right, on the north end, on the north end. And so they didn't actually have um, any parking behind them at all, I think, is no. that right? No, I know, yeah. that's, that's the one that I really that worry about. That didn't have any. Because and that's the one actually that even before the UMass students came back, right, that there was always a couple people parked at yeah. the permit spaces at that end. The, the only thing I worry about there is at one point they also had a, it, there was a wheel, wheel like a, a ramp into oh, okay. that house. So I don't, I don't know who lives there. I've never seen anyone. Go uh, okay. there, I do know that right. people live in that house. So the, the person, the person who used the wheelchair passed away. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. This is a small town we live in. Okay. Yes. Um, and then, and just the idea too, that if you're just a number of permits, spaces on the street, then we're also increasing the number of um, spaces available to the general public, right? So that can help address the parking demand. Um, and I am interested in this option about um, the spaces that can be designated for both permit parking and metered. And I don't know, are there any other places besides like uh, in front of the Lord Jeff that has that in Amherst? The only Spring Street is the only section that has meters with parking permit on top of them. Oh, is it not Boltwood? It's Spring Street. Is that right? Yes, Spring. OK. Also, it's not officially the Lord Jeff anymore. I know. So. It's the Boltwood? Boltwood the Inn? Inn? OK. Oh, the Inn at Boltwood. OK. Yeah. I was trying to remember what to call it. The hotel previously known as the Lord Jeff. 
Um, so I noticed that that's something that happened. I've I've seen that done also in Northampton, um, like in some of the areas near the residential areas near Smith College where they have both permit parking that's also metered. So I'm assuming the way it works is that, and somebody can correct me. Um, if I'm wrong, but that um, people who have permits are allowed to park there and people who don't have permits have to use the meters. Is that how that works? Yes. And then also then the people, if you don't have a permit, then you're subjected to whatever the time limit is on the meters. Yes, so. and if you, have a, if you have a parking, if you have a permit, you're also supposedly subjected to some type of parking limit, supposedly, but okay. I don't understand how that works. Like park, oh. Not like the the winter parking thing, bans. No. Okay, uh, something other than that. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then so if you have a permit, then you can just park in them at any time, and don't you don't have to pay anything or anything. But you don't really have preference, though. No. I mean, it's a little. It is a little strange, I think, to like be competing like with the. <laughs> That the permit, the people with the permit spaces are competing with the meters, like particularly yeah. if there's really busy times. So I don't know, maybe we don't want to suggest that, but but it does seem that there can be times when there's really not that many conflicts, right? Because a lot of people for residential permits, people need them at night, like when they park near their homes, and that the meters aren't then anyway or something. Yeah, so, and, and there's also going to be a lot of times, I mean, both times of day, but then also times of year where it's not going to be that busy at the park, I think. I mean, it's busy now, the playground's new and things, but I guess it's colder and as the students aren't there, you know, that Is might- Is it possible to have the permit parking in this situation be only at night? Permit parking from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. for the, people the who park in the parking ends at like five and six, the permit parks huh. in the- Yeah. So, yeah, but, so the way the permit parking currently works, the program is it five, runs yeah. September to May, nine, nine to five. Bruce. Aren't there two for kinds of parking? Uh, There's one for employees. Isn't there one for employees and one for residents? Two different kinds of stickers? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. for the residents parking, do they have to be within a certain distance? Of that parking spot? No, you just be like, I can get a residence one up in North Amherst and park downtown. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Really? Oh, yeah. There's yeah, no restrictions on the residential parking permit? You have to qualify okay. in the area of residential parking. So if you live outside an area that has no residential parking, then oh. you can get one. So what you need to do is get residential parking in your neighborhood, and then you get the sticker. Oh. Then when you go downtown, then you can park in the residential space. Uh -huh. But are there any neighborhoods outside of downtown that have the residential parking permit program? I don't think so yet. I don't think so. And then I had seen something, Nick Robbie had written something up and he said there were 356 spaces with the permit program, but are those, does anybody know if those are just the employee spaces or including the residential? I mean, the, re the, resi the residential doesn't have very many. Like They're I think both. on the map, oh, those spaces are both, okay. Like, but to Chris's point about how there's the downtown, like downtown center parking, but that I don't, is that limited only to employees or is it employees and residents? And then there's also resident. If, if you live in the downtown, you can get a downtown permit. Right, if okay. If you work downtown, you can get a downtown permit. Got it. But okay. then there are certain streets that have residential um, permits like Cosby Ave and places like that, right? But there's, but the map is really limited of those. I that's my impression. Like when I looked at them, the map of them. Anyway, I mean, maybe we're getting too into weeds, but yeah. it just seemed it seemed like there really aren't. There's a map. Hold on, let, let me just see if I can pull it. Up. Actually, there's a map of only, where they are. It's only it on McClellan Street. Yeah, McClellan it didn't Street seem like there's many. Is the only residential. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what that was my impression. Are you, um, Guilford? Are you basing that on the map? Yeah, I'm looking at it. You want to see it? Yeah, yeah, sure. That that was my impression as well. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. 
So the yellows, the yellows are the town center permits. The reds are the residents. Wow. Okay. And then this little blue section is the resident is um town center and meter. That's the oh, section. Got it. So we don't have any. Oh, but then you have these green, the green areas too, like up um off of Triangle Street. That yeah. Oh, Alan, on, and, yes. on spring, that housing there is just Amherst College, right? Um oh, but it's know. town center, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, okay. isn't Spring Street where they're having the new um, apartment building that's not done yet? Right. Yeah, the, the, part, the, one the that, apartment. Yeah. The one that was leased, they were leasing for the fall. It doesn't look quite ready. Um, okay. Yeah, so that was my impression too that there's only a few blocks that have these residential pe permits. So. Now we can add one. Well, and, and so, I mean, on North Pleasant Street, I mean, the ones mm -hmm. near Kendrick Park, it, it doesn't, it just normally doesn't seem like too many people are parking there. But as Eve said, now those students are back, it's a lot busier. <laughs> so. Well, I, I also think it's because of the UMass parking issue. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, you, UMass has, UMass asked the town for 341 parking spaces to help them. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. They had told them to pound sound. So I wonder if if <clears throat> we might make the north end the north end of Kendrick Park, um, where that residential house is, actually some of that red parking. The red well, if, but they live there; they can get a downtown permit because right. they live in that downtown area. And they do; yeah. they park but there. Point is, yeah, that is covered with students every day. Well, I think this is where, in terms of when they're reviewing, when Sean Mangano and others are reviewing the parking program, just how the number of permits that are issued compared to the number of spaces and where the demand is. Like even the parking study that was done by Nelson Nygaard, right? It, can't, it was completed before some of the residential without much parking was completed. So, I mean, I think we're going to continue to see. I mean, there are neighborhoods in Boston, for example, right, that they there's like three parking permits for every space and you really have to like fight for those spaces. And I don't know like when, if and when we would get to that sort of situation, but it seems like that could be growing in downtown. Um, Eve, do you have a comment? Yeah, I was just going to say, I, might, I was thinking that what Kim was implying was that these people might be able to have a space, but if they have to walk two blocks from the only available space to their home, that's not what we want to provide for them. So adding some spaces, you know, that are right close by might be still important, even if the total number of spaces is adequate. But, the, but Eve, so those people park, they live on North Pleasant Street and they park on North Pleasant Street. So we had been suggesting that they could continue to park on North Pleasant Street and in front of their house. But North Pleasant Street is what we're talking about. Do you mean a different part of North Pleasant Street? The North Pleasant Street west of Kendrick Park, it currently has the permit parking right there. Oh, that, they're, that, they're, that they're currently using. Okay. So even in the summer, there's people parked at a few of the parking spaces on the north end of that section of North Pleasant Street. But are you seeing, Kim, then that these spaces, these permit spaces are getting completely taken over by students? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. So is that because um, they're not, it's not enforced? I have no idea, actually. I don't know. But, but, okay. but I, I, but, but but I think, I think what... Go ahead, Kim. I'm sorry. It's not, it's not occupied. There, there's no one on that street when UMass is not, I mean, hardly anyone on that street when UMass is not in session. I mean, but I'll, it seems to me like, you know, if people don't want to pay the hundreds and hundreds of dollars to park at UMass, plus you can't even get spaces, you know, in some parts of campus, um, like the waiting lists are very long. And the fact that the town center permit parking program and if you look at all this yellow right you could live in a student you could be a student who lives pretty far away like on south prospect street or spring street or all the way over near dickinson or something right and you could park i mean you could drive over and like park closer mm -hmm. to um, campus and then by the time you're at kendrick park you're like right on the edge of campus right so for a long time too um umass people were using the the lot behind cvs 
Like I remember when I was first on the public transportation and bike committee, you could park in the town portion of the CVS parking lot for 10 hours. It was a limit of up to 10 hours and it, it cost 10 cents an hour. So for $1, you could park at the CVS lot for the whole day and then you could take the bus or however you wanted to get to UMass. I mean, it was very inexpensive and parking at UMass is, it's much more expensive. I'd like to suggest so, that we just leave it yeah. as it is. That we, yeah, that's we fine. That the number of spaces that are yeah. permanently reduced and then let some other authority that maybe investigates this more decide how many spaces that should be. No, thank you, Bruce, that's good. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so the other decision points that we had left to talk about um, with the park was, um, so Sidewalk. we had the, the sidewalk was one question. And then also if we want to talk about bike facilities and did we have anything else? No, I guess we didn't have anything else we wanted to say about parking. So, um, okay, so on, this, on the sidewalk, so um, did you have a comment? Yeah, so I was going to share a few pictures of um, a bike lane and then just a couple articles I found that talk about safety. Um, can, we, can, can we focus on the sidewalks first? Is that, well, would that be okay? It's okay, but one of the suggestions is what Guilford said last time or the time before, which is that it might be better to put the bike lane on the level of the sidewalk. So it might have implications for the sidewalk. Oh, I didn't hear Guilford say that. I think that was something that I had been thinking about just in terms of safety. I don't know, Guilford, did you say that? <laughs> Oh, okay. So, all right. So we can talk about it in that context. So, um, so I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about a shared path. Like if we took some of the, on the west side of North Pleasant Street and, and Guilford, can you pull up the map just so we have like a visual? I mean, so I've been thinking that um, I am concerned about a counterflow lane like at the street level. And and even if we don't have parking on that side, which which I'm glad we don't because it would be completely unsafe and it wouldn't even be feasible to have a counterflow lane. Um, just for the drivers who are exiting the driveways, you know, from the nine plus driveways that are along that section of North Pleasant Street. And, I, and I'm speaking from somebody who works a lot with drivers, driver safety or driver training and so on, right? I'm a licensed driving instructor. I know how and when crashes happen a lot. Um, but what happens is that, so a driver at, you know, at a sidewalk, if the street is one way, the drivers will mainly be looking to the right for the traffic so that they can merge into the one-way traffic. Um, and we can get them, <laughs> I mean, maybe if we, even if we have signs or something to encourage them to look at the sidewalk to the left-hand side so that they can see if there's pedestrians. Um, but then if you, so if you have a combined path, like something similar to University Drive and the, to me, the fact that the green belt is the five or six feet wide, I think it could be possible. Plus the sidewalk there is pretty wide too. So it could be feasible to have a shared path, but if you put it on the street level, right, the drivers who are gonna be exiting and going to the north, like they need to look left at the sidewalk and then they they drive up the five, six feet and then they need to look left again to like check for cyclists. So I just wasn't sure that- I don't think it's feasible to have a all that. No, no, there's no feasibility to have a counterflow lane on the road because if a car needs to, you know, if there's a car moving out of a space and another car coming along needs to move out of the way, the only place they've got to go is into the, you know, to the side, which would put anybody on the counterflow uh, in direct competition. So I just don't think there is a viable choice to put a counterflow on the roadway. No, but yeah, so, so, but Marcus, it would be on the roadway on the west side. Yeah, I know. Have, I know. So have if any, somebody's coming have out of a space, but it's not going to have any parking. I understand that, but yeah. if somebody's coming out of any space, out of a space, and somebody else needs to take evasive action, the only place they have to go is to the west side of the road, right? So you're putting into a direct competition between the bike and the car, and the bike's going to lose. So I think that for the safety's sake, ah, okay. maintaining the flow in the same direction on the roadway 
um, would be the way to go. Okay. Also, what what is the width of the street behind the uh, parking? Because if the width is wide enough, I don't I, I don't think that the car would necessarily go into the bike lane. I mean, is it a standard width, the street? Well, the, the street's going to be pretty wide, I think, right? I mean, Guilford, can you speak to that a little? But if it's a one-way street, how wide is the main uh, travel lane of the street going to be? The travel lane is going to be at least 12 feet because we got to accommodate people making left turns and right turns out of the uh, our left turns into the housing and right out. So we just got to make sure they have enough room to make that turning movement. So, so it'll probably be 12 feet all the way down. And to tell the truth, I'm not sure how much space, extra space there'll be for a bike, a dedicated bike lane. Um, it might, it might come out that we either have to split the sidewalk or we put a uh, shared lane, a share on the um, travel lane. So wait, can you explain what you mean about putting a share on the travel lane and what that would mean with the cyclists? Well, we just mark the we just mark the left side of the travel lane that it's for bicycles to share with bicycles. So cars and bicycles would share it. Oh, are you, but you're talking about you're talking about the park side of the travel lane, right? No, I'm talking about the west side. The counterflow lane. No, it's it's going to go the same direction as traffic, and if you're going. If you're riding a bicycle, you're not going to want to drive opposite traffic in the travel lane. You're not going to want, you're going to want to go around. You're going to want to go down to the roundabout and go around this way. Tracy, can I share the pictures I wanted to share? Sure. Um, so um, uh, is it possible for me to, to share my screen? Oh, yep. All right, so I just wanted to show, show you guys an example of a, um, of a road with a counterflow bike lane that I used to use all the time at University of Oregon that works really well. But I'm also gonna show you a little bit of uh, research about pros and cons. Um, so in this case, it's a two-way travel lane, um, but it wouldn't have to be, right? So it could be that the people going um, this way would share the lane just with Sharrows the way Guilford just said. I'm sorry about my loud dog. Um, and people going this way would um, have a separate lane with a buffer. So, um, sorry, Mocha, Mocha, no. So um, it's a completely viable way to do it and then, um, and then to have the people here. So I did just a little bit of looking up um, and notice that there, there are parked cars on the right. So it's, it's very similar to what you might imagine being able to do here, right? Um, I did do just to look up a couple um, things and it was pretty interesting that if they have, they say if you have two-way bike lanes, it does produce more injuries. Um, although if you're talking about what Guilford said, where you've got the sharrows for the folks going north and you've only got a one counterflow lane, it might not be quite as the same. Um, but at the same time, it actually increases ridership significantly. So um, it makes, there are several suggestions that come out and one of them is basically what you guys were saying, which is you would put that counterflow lane up on the level of the sidewalk that that makes a big difference. So you could have the northbound bikes share the path and the southbound bikes on a, I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally make it a multi-use path. I would actually separate out the bikes and the pedestrians because the traffic might be pretty high at sometimes coming between UMass and downtown. That would be my take. All right, no. I'm done. No, I think, you, you I think, that? I think that's width? it. How much width would you need for that, Eve? To have a sidewalk and a and a um, what you what did you call it a counterflow lane? Hold on, I've got a uh, give me just a minute and I'll look it up. So I mean, I, I see it. Go ahead, Eve. I can speak while you're looking it up. But I mean, yeah, I see ahead. Chris sort of comparable to um like a university drive, 
right, that the university drive path, it has both pedestrian and bike traffic in two directions. Um, and that's actually not even that wide a path. Like I think it's some sections of it are like seven or eight feet. Um, and this could, I mean, Guilford could would know the measurements better, but it seems like currently the sidewalk is at least four or five feet and the, the green space as I was saying is five or six feet. So it's potential that if a lot of that green space could be used for something like that, that it would provide sufficient room. It, it to me does seem safer than the counterflow lane on the street. But then also, if you do have a counterflow lane, you would need to also have a good size buffer, you know, just because to the, to Marcus's point and so on, but I'll, visually for safety and so on, um, that you're talking it about ends up being almost two lane. You're talking about a multi-use path on the west side then, right? A multi-use path on the west side, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we you know we've ruled out a counterflow lane in the roadway. I mean, do we all agree on that? Count no counterflow lane in the roadway. So Eve, did you have something you want to show? Um it's not great actually. I mean I can show it, but um it's not great because it's really about a city. So <clears throat> I mean, so I did talk to Jeff McCullough from the PVPA. Piece. Hold on. So just a second. Sure. So this is what I suggest for a city for for a lane where you've actually got those two lanes. So um, the buffers where I've read the buffers need to be at least a foot and a half as the minimum. Bike lane needs to be five feet at a minimum. So I don't know what you'd need for a curb, but it would be on the order of um, seven feet minimum to add that. Ooh. But see, we're not going to have all that. Right? You don't I mean, right. so That's between, between the make... two between the two bike lanes and the buffer, you're talking about 15, 16 feet. Yeah. No, because like we don't have because we just said we wouldn't add one of the bike lanes, right? One of the bike lanes we wouldn't add. It would be a shared path. Mm -hmm. So you just need to add one bike lane, and then the buffer could could be as little as a foot and a half. We don't even need to have the, the buffer, right? Because you'd be going with traffic. You could have a share as um as we were talking about earlier i mean so one question i had about that you know looking at this space and comparing it to something like university drive is um how because you do need to have the curb cuts for the driveways right coming from the sidewalk level down to the street level so you know guilford how how much of a setback would you need to have if you're going to have a path like that um, to have it be level for the for the pedestrians and the cyclists and including some kind of curb cut down to the street um, for the vehicle for the motor vehicles that are exiting and entering on the driveways what do you it's think usually, usually around two feet two feet okay so we only have eight feet for the sidewalk and whatever's left over on the west side we have eight to eight to ten feet, and that's if we move the sidewalk over. Um, right, if we so the well, the, the sidewalk on the the west side of the park is how big? Five feet. Uh, you can keep talking. I'll I'll figure it out again. No. <laughs> um, I mean, so I would I would want it if it's, it's going to be like two way bike traffic and potentially the pedestrians as well and it is a major pedestrian corridor i would just want to make sure that that shared use path is sufficiently wide that there aren't going to be a lot of conflicts and that it could also be um have pavement markings and so on to sort of encourage like separation of the flow so there's, there's roughly 40 42 feet we have to work with here and then On the street? we have a okay we put a five foot sidewalk against the park and where the street is now, like takes us down to 37. If we have 20 feet for the parking, that's 17. And if we do a 12 foot travel lane, that's five feet for the sidewalk on the west side. So that's where you're using the the green space right because the green space is like about five to six feet yeah use yeah use the whole everything's gonna be everything's gonna be paved okay. 
What, Can I what ask would a you question? Think? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, what, what would you think of having a conventional sidewalk with the curb and then the bike lane painted green as, as you showed in your photo, Eve, but the bike lane would be in the road? Would that fit better, Guilford? Um, no, because you, I think you need to have more of a buffer. If you have a counterflow bike lane, you need to have more of a buffer with the traffic. And also to Marcus's point, you know, if people are pulling out and there's also traffic and I mean, maybe we don't need a 12 foot travel lane so much. You're going to have to, you got people turning in and out. Um, so, why don't you why don't you just say if there can be a bike accommodation? Right, no, of course. Bike accommodation. And or, and we're agreeing that we'd like it to be on the um on the sidewalk level. Gilford, do you think that that would work better? Yeah, I mean we could talk about yes. Okay. I, I interrupted Holden. Holden, did you have a point? Uh yeah, I just uh, wanted to clarify uh, I I think it the map shows parallel parking, but I think that it's been talked about like angled parking. Yes. Um, it is, I guess I didn't, I didn't remember the reason that angled parking was being used and, and the, the width difference between those two. Mm. I don't know how much of a difference that would make. I think, didn't we, we decided that angled parking, there can be more spaces. Correct. Gonna be more spaces and it's safer. And it we didn't think it was safe to have parallel parking on both sides of the street, particularly like with the high volume of pedestrians and kids, and also with the poor sight lines at the nine plus driveways that are on the west side of the road. So we thought that if we can have exact, you know, the same number of parking spaces on the east side of the road, um, and just have like less conflict and so on like that. It so just seemed be, like better so because, the, option, oh, because the proposal, the proposal like in the map that um, was presented to the town council would have had parallel parking on both sides of the street. So parallel parking on both sides of the street would not be that different than the angled right. parking on one side of the street. Okay, so you don't necessarily have a difference because you're um, saving room on having parallel parking on one side. Yeah, and and is is parallel parking on a single side? Is that does that take up too many spots and or the safety concerns? We well, didn't part, part of part of the goal too was to increase the number of spaces in the okay. vicinity of the park. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so do we want to take some kind of vote related to the bikes, if we can? So, so we would frame it as we, we would recommend, if possible, a bike lane, but it would be above the curb, and, and it would be a multi-purpose path that would include the sidewalk, correct? Yeah. Okay. Right. I, I move that that be our recommendation. I don't think you make it a multi-purpose path. I think you have a separated bike lane and a separated sidewalk, but they're both at the sidewalk level. So they're okay. they're separated with some kind of marking. Okay. Isn't that so the same? Amend the proposal to to reflect that. Right. Okay. Sorry, but but is the um is that bike lane, is that just for counterflow? Or is that yeah, because because yeah, okay. Great, because then it would be take the street, it would be shared par shared with bicycles, that entire street. I mean, right. well, the right. one way part of that no, street. North, northbound traffic. Yeah. 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 I mean, so by, the, the way- it, With the traffic and southbound right. traffic by bikes would be in this special lane. I mean, the way one cyclist um, described it to me, and I think this is a great way to think about it, is to not pay like to not have pavement markings for a bike lane adjacent to the angled parking yes. but particularly because one if you have them right next to the angled parking maybe that's not so safe but also if that street does not have a high volume 
of car traffic, then really the cyclist should be able to choose like where they feel the safest going northbound. And hopefully if it's not going to be as, you know, a busy cut through street and so on, a lot of times they'll just feel safe, like being in the middle of the lane and things, and they'll be far away from the angle parking. I think that Guilford um, didn't give us enough room to do what you're talking about. I think that Guilford gave us five feet on the west side for a sidewalk and didn't give us enough room for a sidewalk and a bike lane elevated on the west side. Is that right, Guilford? Um, yeah. I think you need to say if we can fit this thing in, we can. But, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I thought there was more space than what you just did the math of, Guilford. I thought one of the ideas was take away the sidewalk on the park side for at least right. part of that. I thought that we were actually saving some width by putting angled in parking rather than two sides of parallel parking. So, and then we're talking about removing that buffer. Right now, there's already a, a sidewalk and a buffer. So, I don't know. It just seemed like the math, there might actually be more than. What but we're added, we are taking away from the roadway with the footpath on the east side. I is there a footpath all the way up and down? To there will be. Yes. Well, we haven't we haven't voted on that yet. I mean, originally, yeah. yeah. We did. Originally, the, when, two two meetings ago, you guys the proposal said no sidewalk on the east side. Well, what Eve I, is talking about now is something that's probably ten feet wide on the west side, right, Eve? To five feet for a sidewalk and five feet for a bike lane. Yeah, at or, least. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I don't. That's not gonna. I don't think that. I think we're gonna have to like get smaller. But I think okay, we can do it. And then, I mean, I guess too, if with the sidewalk and okay, so do we want to take a vote just on the whole bike path idea or the kind of what Bruce was saying? I just um, worked on the language of that. I think, I think one thing that we're, we might be a little forgetting a bit about is that um, I think most of the people who are going to be pre proceeding maybe by bike through um, that street from North Pleasant okay. going counter flow, they're really, I can tell you because I do this with frequency and while I might appreciate a counterflow lane, that street does not feel, I would net, I usually ride on the sidewalk and you all know that I feel like a very confident cyclist as it is. And if I ever choose to do that piece and I cut through into McClellan to get home, it's, it's currently very dangerous, right? To, because of the, the parking situation on that street. And um, I feel really safe on the sidewalk because I feel like I can see everyone. And, and there really aren't, I don't really see that many people cutting through because now there's that beautiful sidewalk that's very wide that I choose to go onto the sidewalk. If, I, if I'm going downtown instead of home, I would go on that sidewalk. It's really wide and um, it feels really safe to me as opposed to being in the street through that intersection. It was some time that I go through the roundabout there. So I don't think, I think um, that at least in my experience, there aren't that many people that would currently ride their bikes in the counterflow. What we're, we're, we're calling the counterflow position, even with a two-way street right now. I just, I just think we're trying to build a robust network where yeah. people are gonna feel safe and invited to bike more and this is precisely the kind of place and a way to make that happen. Well, and Eve had brought up earlier, right? If you improve that corner, the triangle North Pleasant corner um, to make it safer. Um, like where there's a, like increase the width, right? Eve for like more cyclists. Yeah, I mean, I bike that way when I go to downtown you a do. lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing, what was I going to say, it seems like one thing you guys might have to choose, um, if, if this space issue is really that tight, what Guilford is saying, you may have to, or you might want to say, which is a priority, getting that five foot counterflow bike lane onto the sidewalk on the west side, or getting a five foot sidewalk on the east side. If you yeah. have to choose between those two things, which one would the TAC recommend? 
Yeah, I think I think it's a really good point, Eve, actually. And I guess one question I have, I mean, if we want to talk about the sidewalk, one question I have is, um, well, I was somebody who was originally opposed to having a sidewalk all the way along the west side of the park because it seemed a little bit redundant to me because you have a sidewalk on the west side of North Pleasant Street there. And then also if we have these um, improved crosswalk crossings like both at McClellan, but then also if we have one north of the park, what I sort of saw is if people are walking or even biking you know, on the sidewalk towards the park from like the UMass campus, and then they turn onto North Pleasant Street, then they could cross at the, um, the raised crosswalk that we want to have north of McClellan and then like enter the park that way. And that that north corner of the park, that north west corner of the park, it is really steep over there. And so you wouldn't really, I mean, I even sort of wonder even the idea about, you know, if we have the angle parking go too far north and then you have the sidewalk right next to it, like people aren't actually going to get to the park that way very much, <laughs> like because it's much, you know, as I walk it, it seemed pretty steep in that. But if you have the, if you have a raised crosswalk, you know, North McClellan, that people could cross there, and then there could be like a flatter path, like into the, sort of the key elements of the park. If you have and, a, if you have parking on the east side of the road, though, you're going to want people to get out of their cars and get onto a sidewalk. You're not going to want people to walk in the street to get into the park. Yeah. So I think you need the sidewalk on the west side of the park, at least for some distance, wherever you have parking. No, right, yeah. Well, well we also right. talked about how some of that, some of that parking, like on the north end of the angle, the north end of the angle parking could be like permit parking that would serve the residents. So those people would actually be crossing the street to go back to their cars. Yeah. And not using it for the park. You can't force them to go straight across. Yeah. We need them no, to get to a safe place that we need to, and the no, only way absolutely. they can get to that yeah. is on a path. It's a safety issue that we provide a footpath when we provide parking. I mean, it's it, pure and but simple. It isn't, but it isn't going to be as much of a safety issue if the traffic is one way, one it's way traffic still a, on we're a We're still putting street. pedestrians into a street, yeah. two way, one way. I mean, if you put them into a street and they're uh, parallel parking, you're still putting them into a one way section of the street. And we don't do that. We don't want them to do that, right? We we want them to get them away from any traffic onto a safe space on the footpath right. and then di direct them to a place that we want them to cross over. However, we want them to cross over, but not from the car running across the street to get to somewhere. That, I mean, that's just not not happening. But that is what we have currently on that street. Right, but we have an opportunity to fix it. Yeah, I think right. that makes sense to me, Marcus, what you're saying, yeah. especially yeah. when you think so many of those pedestrians are going to be only three feet tall, you know? Right, no, of and course. So I, I agree with that also because with the new activities in the park, it's going to be a, a busier area than it is right now. So, um, so, it, so on that, like, north end of the park, so... I mean, we talked about, right, having the whole five foot sidewalk be in the street and none of it on the park side, like not losing any park. I mean, is there any flexibility to in order to protect the trees? Is there any flexibility to make it like four feet into the road and one foot on the side, except for the north end that's so, I mean, I'm not on the north end where it's so steep on the northwest corner of the park. I wasn't even sure if you have to even go out further to like make sure that well it sounds like Guilford is saying they they can go and review all the measurements and okay and then you know you guys can make a recommendation that if it's possible you know build have a counter flow bike lane at the sidewalk level yeah it, it sounds like you know uh, the discussion from Marcus at all is that the right, priority sure. is getting that sidewalk on the east side right. okay the five foot sidewalk but on I the mean, west side if you can get in that counter flow mm -hmm. Real, I mean, I, I was just looking at that this morning and I mean, this, there are tons of trees and power lines on that side, right there, like really quite flush with the park, with the street right there. Well, you're talking on the 
right at the park at the park yeah. side Kim. Yeah. so i mean are you saying that there would be issues with putting the sidewalk there or that there would right be? well i mean there is this there it's both steep like you right mentioned. that's what i'm saying yeah but there also are a ton of trees and the power lines are right there right so isn't that why guilford said to put the sidewalk in the street yeah, yeah. yes right is, but so has, Gilford is putting the sidewalk in the street. Is that sufficient to, I mean, would you still need to have some kind of like retaining wall or anything in some no. parts of it? Because it would be. No, I mean, the, the, the slope is already stabilized. It's already an established yeah. slope. As long as we're not cutting into that slope, we don't need to stabilize it any other way. Okay. Has the, has the committees uh, considered putting the angled parking on the west side of the street um, mm -hmm. instead? And that way, okay, that's been talked about for, yeah. I guess. I mean, the issue concerns. is just with that is just that there's too many um, ingress and egress places with all those, those nine driveways, the nine plus driveways between McClellan and Triangle. Can we show that, it again? That doesn't seem yeah. that. So I mean, we can show it again, but it just, that's just not compatible with angled parking. Also, then you have the issue of people parking and then having to cross the street to get to the park. That's yeah. true too. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of being on the same side as the park, that that yeah. really makes it much more so, difficult. So, Guilford, if you zoom into that part. So hold in those all those uh, all those those are huge rentals, and they all have lots of parking in the back. Um, there's plenty of parking back behind those rentals, but there is a, a lot of traffic in and out of those places, especially, you know, during morning, evening, commuting times. So it really wouldn't be sufficient for angle. It would be a mess, <laughs> basically. And I think, I mean, there are good points about having the parking adjacent to the park for safety too, for like everybody not having to cross the street. Yes. Even with the sidewalks and so on. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Hey, Guilford. Can I ask a random question? How often? It seems like the the poles, the electric utility poles, just are repeatedly a constraint on putting various pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure where we'd really like to put it. How often do those things get replaced? And and is it possible to have a long term plan for as they get replaced to move them five feet over? No, they they get they don't get replaced very often unless they're hit by cars, and getting them to move over more than eighteen inches um, legally requires them to go before the town council and have another poll hearing and set the poll farther back. So it's um, it's the rule. It's 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 an archaic system, but it's it's doesn't work well in our favor. That sounds like a good thing for somebody to try to change. Yeah. Okay, so. Do, do we want to vote and, and put these issues all under yeah. one vote of, we're recommending a sidewalk bordering the park with the head-in parking. And then if there is enough room on the other side of the street that there would be a bike lane in addition to the side, the existing sidewalk. Yeah. Is that really like I that? mean, I guess, I yeah, I like the idea of doing those as two separate votes, right? So sort of what we did before. Okay. Um, and that we could say that we support, you know, we support a sidewalk on the, on the, park um, side. On the west side of the street. I mean, the east side of the street, on the park side of the street. Um, What's that? What's that? Oh, Bruce? Bruce, you said angle in parking. You want right. back in, right? Well, I think we were leaving that up to the town. Okay, right. so angle parking, just angle parking. Angle parking. Right. Um, Should we do that vote first, Tracy? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, sure. So, I'll, I'll, I'll and, and, so I'm sorry. So there's no possibility of having it be less than five feet, like for any of it, right? We couldn't take like a foot or. <laughs> The sidewalk? Yeah, with this. No, not the side. If we want the sidewalk to be five feet, can any of it go into the park by like a foot or something? No. Oh, or, uh, yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of little. Yeah. I mean, don't. This is only the concept. Tell us the things you'd like and we'll, we'll try to fit them into the. Into I mean, it. I guess, do we feel okay as a committee if it goes into the park a little, if it also helps make 
We just need to say we want the sidewalk right. on the on right. the east side and let everybody else decide where it is. Yep. Right. Uh, right. So, so um, up to five feet into the street, if needed for the trees, right? I don't think we need to set any oh, limit, yeah. really. No. no. Yeah, I, I wouldn't get too prescriptive. All right. Things. Okay. Mm. I mean, we, you could ultimately, Tracy, you can, we can write that in our. No, of course. So we recommend having a five foot sidewalk. On the west side of the street. The street. On the west. The right on the west side of the park. Uh -huh. The park. I second that motion. All those in favor. Unanimous. Okay, so that's five. Okay. And so the, the second motion? That, that we, if there is room, that we, we would like to see a, a bike lane on the west side. Mm -hmm. Counterflow bike lane. Yes. On the same, well, at the same I'm, level as the sidewalk. I think, I mean, we could even just talk about widening it you know, to the extent possible to accommodate people who might want a bike. Could we say something like that? I don't think we need to get that flowery. Like, I mean, I I'm, well, but I mean, I'm just saying it doesn't, I mean. I think that's a second choice, right? That's creating a multi-use path. Right. Yeah. And that's okay. a second choice. Okay. But you could put that in as your second choice. Well, I mean, I'm just saying if there isn't sufficient width for a counterflow. Right, right. That's we can we say that we can, we can have that be our, our um, Okay. Uh, votes, but then we can discuss other options. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I would suggest that we say that we we ask for a footpath on the west side of North Pleasant that is wide enough to accommodate right bicyclists and pedestrians because it doesn't have to necessarily be dedicated, but it could be if it's wide enough. But at the same time, there's no law that says you can't cycle on a footpath, right? So. No, but that's yeah. but that's Marcus. What Eve was just saying is that that would be like a second choice. So we, I mean, yeah, yeah, right. So something? we we set out the the language that right. we are trying to get it as wide as we possibly can to accommodate these things, so that right. we're not being too prescriptive in what we want, but we're trying to accommodate with the width that we have available. Right. So I mean, we could say that the TAC recommends widening the sidewalk on the west side of the street. Right to accommodate both pedestrians and bicyclists, like going in the counterflow direction. Yes. Yes. Okay. I so move. Okay. I second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Right. Great. And do you want to do you want to vote to say that the the main path would be officially designated as a shared um, bike? Route, so it might even have sharrows or signage on it to say Me. shared bikeway for I the think we would. bicyclists. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think we could just clarify. I don't know if we need to have a vote on that, but we would just want to clarify that for bicyclists traveling northbound that we um, anticipate that they would be best. Um, the best facility for them is to bike in the lane, like yeah. in the main lane. And and but we should we should suggest also that's fine. Yeah. Designated, um, like, you know, sharing the road right there in the street. Yeah. Okay. So we could just say that the TAC recommends that for cyclists in the north. biking northbound that they can share the, share the street with the, they could share the travel lane. Mm -hmm. And that, there should be some kind of marking or signage yeah. to, to encourage that. Yep. Yep. And that also, I mean, if you're a low level cyclist, like a child or something, you could be on the sidewalk. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds and good. Go to the pedestrian. Yeah, that, that's important too, because technically downtown sidewalks are not supposed to have any bicyclists on them. So I don't know if this area counts as that, that part of downtown. We also are saying it's shared use. We're, we're suggesting shared use. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, we could yeah, we could say that we want it to be that the sidewalk could accommodate like you know lower level of cyclists. I don't know that we need to. Oh, um, but I would. I mean, downtown starts at the cow, right? <laughs> Where does downtown start? I don't. Doesn't it start at the cow? You're oh. not. 
I can't hear you, Gilbert. <laughs> no, not now. It, it starts basically this intersection. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. The, the business improvement district actually goes towards campus a little bit, and then it goes down Triangle Street back all the way down to um, Main Street, and that's kind of the edge of the downtown. But I think if little kids uh, bicycle on the sidewalk in this area, nobody's going to do anything about it. I don't think um, so. It's only where, you know, there's a lot of heavy pedestrian traffic up by the Unitarian mm -hmm. Church and the post office in that area. They don't want people bicycling on the sidewalk. Right, side. right, right. Oh, and what I saw the other day, I've seen them zipping around is um, like electric scooters. Oh, God. Yeah. They're very fast. I saw them downtown. They're just, coming. They're coming. They're, they're really, I mean, it was all like 10, 12 year olds riding them, no helmets and going fast. Okay. Well, apparently right. we don't have sidewalks sufficient for that, so. Well, all right. So do we wanna just take a vote on the last one too, that it's a five, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Okay, all so in favor? Oh, do we want the language? But... The most, yeah. Be better the most. All right. Oh, Okay, so the TAC recommends that for cyclists traveling north on North Pleasant Street, there should be pavement marking sharrows and that the bicyclists should be in the main travel lane. Should we say it. that there's dedicated um, bicycle, I mean, cycling markings in the road, not necessarily say there is sharrows because if there's sufficient width, we could actually get away with a dedicated bike lane. And we would but we are be... saying that that wouldn't actually be desirable, Marcus, from a safety standpoint, because then you're indicating, like, for example, if we put the bike lane adjacent to the angled parking, then we're we would never do that to be there. You wouldn't put you put the dedicated bike lane away from the parking on the other side, but you don't want to. No, I, I don't think that cyclists. I think cyclists want to stay on the. Yeah, I, I think we leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. OK, I, I mean, yeah. feel comfortable being in the street. I was thinking you no. might just make it a little more general rather than saying sharrows because oh, could wow. signage, like we could say, for example, we could have signage and, we could just and say or some paper kind paper. of some kind it, of markings. Yeah, markings yeah. and signage, right? All right, okay. we need to start wrapping this up. So yeah, let's get okay. Actual um, um, something to vote on. So um, you guys are awesome. I have to run and take my dog. Okay. Out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So do you want to repeat that motion, Tracy? Um, so I just said the TAC recommends that first bicyclists traveling north on North Pleasant Street, there be pavement marking signage, you know, indicating that they can um, travel in the main travel lane. Great. Second. Thanks, Marcus. All those in favor? Okay, great. Unanimous as well. Okay. Great. Um, one and, and we're not going to say anything about the little kid cyclists on the sidewalk right no. now. All right. No. Okay. Great. Um, I don't want to promote rule breaking. Do we need to um, talk about the schedule? Did that happen already for the upcoming meetings? We didn't. So at the last meeting, we had talked about that we're not meeting. We didn't want to meet on the third um, Thursday because that is Yom Kippur, but that we could meet on the fourth Thursday, which is the 23rd, and maybe having a site visit at on North Pleasant Street um, to look at the pedestrian improvements that are planned from Eastman Lane, like up to Pine Street. Okay, great. And, and, and we can um, work on the rest of the schedule later since we're running. We can work on the rest of the schedule later. I think the reason I wanted to, um, so I think, right, if that's an official TAC meeting, that's a site visit, we would still need to notice it mm -hmm. and post it as a meeting. Um, so do we have a meeting place where we want to say that we're going to start? The spoke. <laughs> Not the spoke. Well, we're starting at Eastman Lane. <laughs> hey, the, the spoke is so full of students, I don't think you want to go there right well, now. Well, they have an outdoor patio. In the middle of COVID, they had the people, whatever. That's the densest bar around. Okay. Um, well, you're can talking we meet, about meeting down by the... Uh, can we meet the at the roundabout? roundabout? Yeah. Yeah, the roundabout at the university. Right. On the north end of campus. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So um, what but that, time and what day? We're saying on the 23rd. But what time? I thought we had talked about earlier. Do we want to move it up 
that would be fine. Do we want to move it to 4.30? Let me see. Um, yeah, we, I don't know what time it would be dark by that time of the month. It's going to get dark probably around five-ish. Well, no, that's before no, no, it's daylight like savings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's September. So I'd be happy if we if people are available to meet earlier at, say, 4.30 or so. 4.30 is fine with me. Yep. OK. And then and, um, so then we could park on the like where the pool, like on the yeah, north, the lot. north, yeah, yeah, that lot, the lot that's adjacent to the roundabout. Do, do people know which lot I mean? Or we could ride bikes I'm or however bring you want my to get electric there. Car oh. <laughs> and okay. charge it on the, uh, the chargers that are there. Okay. Gilford, yeah. will you be attending? Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Would you bring any sort of uh, diagrams or drawings or maps or anything? Because I think there could be members of the public at this meeting if they know that we're going to be doing this and people might want to see what this is going to look like. So if you post it as a site visit, you right. can't take public comment, really, or okay. you can't respond to public comment. Right. right. But I think site I visit think is considered be... to be a public a public meeting. Yeah. Site visits are actually exempt from open meeting law. Oh, really? unless you okay. want the public to be there. So well, you wouldn't... actually don't I... have to post oh. it if it's just a um, site visit. No, you're going to have to post it because otherwise, Chris, you can't what's talk about it. Right. If you want to talk about it, you have to post it. And we're allowed, we're allowed to have site visits with COVID and everything. There's no rules about site visits. No, we've been having site visits. Alicia okay. Brewer is going to eat us alive if we don't post it. So we need to post it. <laughs> we don't post planning board site visits, and we're not um, oh, required well. to. We're not going to mention that. Okay. So, <laughs> and then I know that the. Um, the TSO they had asked us so Gilbert is presenting this project on September 30th or you're supposed to be presenting it September 30th to TSO and then they were going to give us the talking points and then they actually wanted to hear from us um I think by like the 18th or the 19th of October so I think when we get back you know we have a meeting in October the first and the third um first and third Thursday. So on the seventh, I guess we're just gonna have to decide what we want to recommend to the um to to give to the TSO. Now the TSO did say that if we hadn't prepared a full memo, we could um at least, you know, give them at least some feedback about our, you know, our feedback. But but we've all reviewed this before. Yeah, I think I think we um, should be able to do this. Yeah. So just yeah, so that sounds so we're gonna plan to meet on the 23rd um at 4 30 um at that parking lot and then go walk north right to see it okay great okay um so just a quick um just a little housekeeping before we go so the tso had asked for our memo on the north pleasant street changes near kendrick park by i think september 21st or so or 20th but i just want to get it to them i mean we've already discussed all the items um, and we took all the key votes on all the elements of the project that we're going to we're going to make recommendations on. Um, I can write up what we've talked about, along with a little bit of the narrative that we mentioned about the other things we're thinking about. Do, are people comfortable doing what we've done in the past, where I could circulate that, and then who, and then somebody, somebody not me, can collect comments maybe back, and okay. then are you okay with that, Kim? And then we can. And then we can just submit it to uh, yeah. TSO. Yep, that sounds good to me. So I'm sure TSO would, I think TSO now is meeting almost every Thursday. I'm sure they'd love to have it early. So, okay. Thank All you, right, thanks. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to pull that together um, a little bit after Labor Day, if not before. So look for Thank it you. like early next week and then right. we will get it off our plate and onto somebody else's. Thank you. No Thank other you. meeting after the site visit. No, no October, meeting. October 7th. Well, you also you have TSO that day too. There's TSO, so yeah. So I think we'll right we'll plan on the site visit being about like an hour or so, an hour. I mean, how long, Gilford? How the long? Long distance. It'll take a long time. To Are we going to go all the way to Pine? Maybe we don't walk all the way to Pine. That well, the project goes all the way to Pine. Right. So Pine, that's the center of North Amherst, right? Is that right? 
speed. How long a distance is that then? Dinner at HOT. That's true. <laughs> Site visit dinner. So this project is not on a strict timeline, right, Guilford? The North Pleasant Street project? Well, T TSO had, was trying to push it along. But you don't have money for it, right? We don't have money for most of everything we talk about. Right. But I guess my point is, could you stretch it out and have two site visits? You because could. Because I don't think you'll be able to cover this in okay. no, one right. night. Like go up to simple gifts for the first one, maybe. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, can we go up to so go first? So part of it when I've seen the plans, right, is that you have the main path on one side of the street and then because of wetlands and things and it switches to the other side. I mean, could we maybe break it up that way? We could. So if you start at Eastman and go up to the to yeah, to graduate housing. Family housing at UMass. Okay. The Are North Village housing, North Village, yeah, which is now, village. yeah. I mean, should we meet at North Village and look at it that way or and not at Eastman? What do you guys think? I, I think we should start at the roundabout at Eastman. Okay. All right. So this also involves lighting too. Uh -huh. I, right. Yeah. We've talked about lighting. Yeah. I mean, we didn't make any recommendations for lighting at Kendrick Park, but I mean, that's something we could think about for future meeting, I guess. But I think we should wrap this. Up. Okay. Sound good, people? So we're going to meet on the 23rd at 4.30 and we're going to start at Eastman. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, I'll right. move to adjourn. Second. All right. Second. Thank All right. you. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Is everyone enjoy the long weekend? Bye, Holden. Thanks, Holden. Thanks, Holden.